Right, we've come out today for something a little bit different. I'm, I'm not actually going to do any fishing with you today. What I want to cover is through this winter, a lot of my fishing has been sort of a carp ledgering or small feeder fishing. I've done a hell of a lot of small feeder fishing over these winter months. And it's massively got me thinking about how I've done things in the past, how I've been well, lazy, I suppose, in the past at using the, the wrong feeders at the wrong time and the wrong baits with certain feeders and whatnot. So what I want to go through today is what I believe, or what for me on any uh, sensible commercials, do you know what I mean? Normal commercials where it's not great big expanse of water, nice normal uh, commercials like, like we got today on Arena Pool, at the right sort of feeds that you need to be using. Because for me, everything's got really, really simple these days in terms of choice and how I want to do things, just to, to stop myself getting confused. So, mainly what I want to go through is that when it comes down to choosing your feeder, th there's four aspects you've got to look at. Firstly, the type of feeder you want to use. Yeah, for me, these days there's only two types. There's either a flat method sort of feeder, like a, a hybrid type feeder, that, that, that's completely replaced all of my method feeders of the past. I, I, I borderline do not see the need for a method feeder, especially uh, in the colder months, there's no need for a method feeder on these style of venues. And secondly is a pellet type feeder, a little special pellet type feeder that I'm actually not allowed to show you yet. I'll, I'll get seriously sheltered at if I, I show you any of the little tiny pellet feeders that I'm using, but they're for putting even smaller amounts of bait in. But for 90% of me fishing, the, the, the flat feeders are gonna do the job these days. So that's the, the style of feeder, the type of feeder, is pretty much covered. Yeah, I'll choose one of those two for depending how much I wanna put in the, the volume of bait I wanna feed. Um, next up is the weight. Yeah, I, I've been obsessed this year with using the right weight to feeder all the time. In, in years gone by, I've used, without doubt, far too heavy feeders. Yeah, where everyone was obsessed with using probably 25 gram plus 30 gram seems to be the the norm that everyone goes to but that's it, it's sort of right because it presents your bait very well on a 30 gram feeder but at the same time it goes in like house brick and it's very very heavy on the bottom which in, in a lot of circumstances it, it's not been right i mean a lot of days that i've been fishing a feeder this winter it's been uh, with no ripple on the water nice and flat calm but you're having to fish your feeder because of the water clarity and if you throw a 30 gram in you're not going to get a bite it's far too heavy, so you want nice subtle feeders landing in the water. Nice sort of 10, 15, 20 gram at the most. For me, that's plenty. I mean, as long as I'm not fishing on a ridiculously uh, steep incline against an island or something, then pretty much the lightest feeder I can get away with, that's what I'm gonna go with every single time. So the lightest you can chuck in the situation, depending on the toe and things like that, that's the feeder you wanna be choosing on the day. So secondly, size. Yeah, it, it may sound dead, dead simple. And size, I don't mean that by weight, I mean the actual size of the feeder. Yeah, because we're, we're far too uh, obsessed with going down the same sort of route, using a medium feeder for everything that we do, and, and not thinking about the actual, uh, I call it the footprint that you create on the bottom, the amount of bait that you're spreading out on the bottom, which is what I uh, cover next. And by choosing the wrong feeder, you can introduce a massive amount of bait really quickly, which can have a massive detrimental effect on your peg at this time of year, because they're, they're not eating a lot of bait. So the last thing you want to be doing is building um, an excess of bait up with every single cast that isn't getting eaten and also at least ultimately spoiling your peg quite quickly because there's a lot of overspill every time you have a cast. So that, that's the, the fourth aspect I want to uh, talk about is that what your feeder, what type of feeder you choose and what size of feeder it is um, diameter wise, actually how much your bait's spreading. I think that's what people don't think about as much these days is what the bait's actually doing on the bottom. We all imagine this lovely little pile but at the same time, that pile can be too big for the fish at times. They can come in and they can eat off certain areas and avoid your hook bait if you're using the wrong feeder. That's what I want to touch on now is, is just using the right style of feeder all the time. So what I want to sort of aiming at is when I, I load my feeder and when it's broke down on the bottom, you can see with a, with a case feeder, I think we're at that camera for a, a close up. With these in case feeders, with the flat hybrid type feeders, it keeps the vast majority of bait within the feeder. So the actual, this all sort of disappears with the odd little fish uh, taking them, but the main volume of bait, which your hook bait's gonna be presented over, is in case, so it keeps it as a very small footprint. So the fish can go straight down, eat that, and I, I definitely believe, I've, I've shown this in the past, catching fish with no bait on, but I believe that the bait is nearly irrelevant when it comes to your uh, feed or your hook bait. I believe that that tight lump of bait is so much more important, because that's what they home in on. They suck it all up, and if that's nice and tight, it's one mouthful, then you get a bite all the time. As soon as you start going to, to larger feeders, method type feeders that spread that, that footprint of bait, when the bait's broken down, spread it over a greater area, that's when the fish get a bigger sort of dinner plate to feed on and there's more chance they're missing your hook bait. You know what I mean, if, if that spreads to sort of my hand size on, on a big method feeder, they can easily feed in, in various places and avoid my hook bait just because carp don't seem to uh, come onto your bait and keep on sucking. 
they'll come down, have one quick suck, maybe two quick goes, and if that's too big, you're gonna miss your fish. And I don't wanna be doing that this time of year. The, the bites are vital. I mean, I wanna make sure that every fish that comes over my feeder ends up in my keep net. I mean, I wanna make sure they're on it. Well, lastly, and possibly, oh, in fact, without doubt, the most important element that you've got to consider is the bait that you're putting on your feeder. Yeah, it, it's definitely not just a case of uh, wetting up some micros or mixing up a random bag of ground bait, chucking it in. It, it'll catch you an odd fish, of course it will, but th there's so much thought that's got to be put into what your feeder's actually doing or what effect your bait's having on the life of your peg, how long your peg's going to last with what your bait's doing when it's been in your peg and what's left in your peg. So as I said, for me, really simple, keep things ground bait, uh, or micros, I don't combine the two anymore. I used to play quite a bit with combining the two. I, I don't bother with that anymore. I try and just use either straightforward pellets, I mean, which is just normal thingy pellets, normally me go-to pellets that I've just softened. And I don't need to mess about anymore because I'm using different feeders in the, the breakdown of my pellets too much. I mean, a year's gone by when I was using uh, method feeders a lot. It was really important to mix two types of pellets. They, they were Coppins and Screttons I was using a couple of years ago um, to get the correct breakdowns. So with a method feed, you had to do that. Once you get these sort of flat feeders that encase your bait, it, it becomes irrelevant because it's all protected on the way in. I mean, I can cast this as nasty as I want, close my eyes, let it land, and my bait will still be protected and it'll still get to the bottom of I want it. Whereas back in the day with a method feeder, that weren't happening. But now I can just mix pellets, um, just, drain, just stick them in water, drain them off a couple of minutes later, and normally you get a nice tacky pellet that you can load into your feeder. And so it's all done for you. It's as easy as it can possibly be and because it's in case, that can get to the bottom. So with pellets though, pellets are gonna be my choice when it's a little bit better, when there's a few fish feeding, or there's, maybe I'm only after one or two big fish, then pellets can be a little bit better then. But, so they're my go-to baits when it's gonna be sort of March onwards when they're feeding a bit, mainly because, going back to that footprint, footprint thing I was talking about, is how much they spread on the bottom. Because when I load a feeder with pellets, it probably ends up sort of, that sort of thing once it once it's done maybe not quite that bad you're looking at that sort of thing when the pellets have actually finally broke down which is it's not too bad but it's still a good area where the fish can suck about but there's going to be quite a bit of bait left on the bottom so i need some fish to be feeding to make sure that bait's mopped up to make sure there's not a, a build up of bait to spoil my peg so what i've been doing a little bit or quite a lot in fact because it's been so difficult and i'm fishing for sort of 10 15 maybe 20 fish at the most through the last few months ground bait's been far far better simply because by using a um, a, a very fine ground mix. I've been using, what have I been using? I've been using that F1 Attract stuff that, that's really sort of, it's ground really, really fine. So it disperses really quickly when I pull my feeder out of the way. So although I can make my feeder, I've still got some pellets on him. I can make my feeder with my ground bait and I can have a lovely feeder. You can see that that's not gonna um, spill out too much once it actually breaks down. Do you know what I mean? There's minimal ground bait around my feeder. I'm probably getting that sort of thing which the fish is always going to home in on my feeder. But because it's such a fine mix, as soon as I pull my feeder, this if, if I haven't caught a fish, or even if I have caught a fish, I suppose, when I pull that feeder to retrieve it, because it's so fine, because those particles in that ground bit have been ground so much, it, it vanishes to nothing. Do you know what I mean? There's no uh, individual piles of bait left on the bottom once I retrieve my feeder, which can prolong my life a lot more when it's a difficult days, when I don't want to be building a peg, I just want a little single feeder in the middle of the nowhere, sort of setting a trap and ground bait's been far more beneficial to doing that and it's been getting me more bites uh, off the same area. I've not got to cast about as much as I did with pellets. So that's definitely been a key thing for me that I've learned so much about this year. Right, so something else I want to touch on a little bit is the actual hook bait choice you use and sort of the way you present that bait or the, the way that that hook bait that you choose presents itself over the pile that you're creating of your, your pellets at the bottom. So again, same as everything I keep babbling about, it's about keeping things simple for me and I choose two baits. Right, I'll either go with a big hard pellet, either a six or an eight mil, depending what I'm feeding or depending how good it's going to be or what I'm fishing for. And the pellets, me bait, that I'll choose for uh, a nice plain normal hook length, just a normal two or three inch hook length. 
and the pellet will actually help keep on the top of the pile. So when actually me, me feeder breaks down, if Rich can do a bit of zooming in, see if I get that sort of thing, then because it's got a load of weight to it, a nice heavy pellet, it's going to pretty much stay on top of my pile. I'm not going to have to worry about it springing off, moving off too easily unless a fish really disrupts it. But I'll see that on my tip anyway, so that's not a problem. That, that, that's my go-to bait, if I'm honest. If I find that I need a standout bait or I need something to get picked out better, then a wafter's the next thing. I mean, they're, they're ever so popular. Wafters are they're probably 99% of people's main bait that they use when fishing whatever type of feeder. And, and for me, definitely as well, I've, I've got a lot of confidence in chucking a wafter out and getting some bites when my pellet's not been quite as uh, picked out as quickly as maybe it should be. But with wafters, I've been playing about a lot of that in, in bait tubs and in tanks. And the way a wafter um, holds over the top of your pile can be really influenced by different things, by the, the material or the, the strength of your, uh, the, the hook length that you use, the size of your hook, uh, all the little elements that you can add to make it present better. Because if you try and just use a wafter uh, on a normal hook length that you'd use with a pellet, just, just as I say, just a three inch hook length with an 18 medium gauge wire hook, then what you find is that as soon as the pellets release on your feeder, your wafter expels, it, it's sort of like, because it wants to pop up a little bit, it pops away from your pile. Yeah, so you have to incorporate different things into it, either use a, a heavier hook, or what, what my favourite little thing in the world at the minute, is by putting a little tiny number 10 shot, literally if we can zoom in on that, I've got a little tiny number 10, literally two mil above my hook, and that keeps my wafter on top of my pile, so when my pile of bait's there, the wafter stays wafting, <laughs> It stays pretty, popped up slightly, but it stays within the pile. Whereas if that just had a free hook length to move on, it'd pop quite away from the pile, it popped to the side, which say to one side of the pile means it's less chance of it getting eaten because it's not right where I want it to be. So lastly, with that chosen, so today we've been using some wafters, so that's hook length I've got on. And again, this is something I've touched on on a few videos before, but it's loading of your feeder, how important it is. This, this has come from my hero, who I watch on video all the time, from Teddy Hearn and the importance in having your, your hook in the right way so it ends up in the right place in the fish's mouth. And also, it goes in the fish's mouth properly rather than just nicking it. So what I want to do with my feeder, the, the best possible way of loading any hybrid type flat method feeders is putting your base on. So he's nicely pushed in. I'm going to put a little tiny indent there like we used to do with the old school. But then by getting my feeder, yeah, getting my bait, sorry, and laying it sideways like that. So you can see that the shot's just inside the bait, the hook's there facing upwards, which is the most important thing, and the bait at a right angle, sitting like a, like a T section almost. My hook's one way, my bait's the other. It sits perfectly over the pile. And also that shot being inside my feeder means that it stays there. So once the feeder actually breaks down, it breaks down all nicely within casing of that feeder, but also my, my bait just pops up slightly. So it stays over the top of the pile because that shot keeps it there rather than it bouncing away. So lastly, what I'll do, just to make sure it stays in place, is I'll leave my bait, bait where it is, and I'll just cover off the hook and the shot, a little tiny bit over the, over the feeder if I need to, over the, the hook bait. But there, I'm perfectly happy that that's ready to go. I know that my hook's facing up, my shot is just inside my feeder, and my wafter's there, ready to go, and that's gonna end up right in the middle of my pile, the perfect or the optimum place as far as I'm concerned, that'll get me a bite a little bit quicker than, than a standard hook bait would or a badly presented wafter would.